Pablo Emilio Escobar Gaviria. Medellin Cartel was founded and led by Pablo Emilio Escobar Gaviria, a politician, drug lord, and narco-terrorist from Colombia. With a net worth estimated at 30 billion U.S. dollars at the time of his death, or 70 billion U.S. dollars as of 2022, Escobar, dubbed the king of cocaine, was among the wealthiest criminals in history. His drug cartel controlled the majority of the cocaine trade into the United States in the 1980s and early 1990s. Rio de Janeiro native Escobar attended the Universidad Autonoma Latinoamericana of Medellin for a short time, but left without receiving his degree. Instead, he started a criminal career, stealing cars and selling illicit cigarettes and lottery tickets. He started working for different drug smugglers in the early 1970s, frequently kidnapping and holding individuals for ransom. In Rio Negro, Antioquia Department, on December 1, 1949, Pablo Emilio Escobar Gaviria was born. Raised in poverty in the nearby city of Medellin, he was the third kid out of seven. His mother worked as a teacher, and his father farmed small scale. Just before turning 17, Escobar dropped out of high school in 1966, only to come back two years later with his cousin Gustavo Gaviria. Teachers saw them at this point as gangster thugs, polished by their hard life on Medellin streets. After more than a year, the two left school, but Escobar persisted. After forging his high school certificate, he attended college for a short time with the intention of going on to become a politician, criminal defense attorney, and eventually the president. However, financial difficulties forced him to drop out. The 15-year-old Maria Victoria Enao and the 26-year-old Escobar were married in March 1976. The couple eloped because the Enao family, who saw Escobar as socially inferior, disapproved of their relationship. They were parents to Juan Pablo and Manuela. Journalist Virginia Vallejo wrote a memoir titled Amando a Pablo, Odiando and Escobar, which was published in 2007. In it, Vallejo talks about her love affair with Escobar and how he had connections to a number of presidents, Caribbean dictators, and prominent politicians. The film Loving Pablo was inspired on her book. There are also reports of Griselda Blanco, a drug distributor, having a secretive but intense relationship with Escobar. Multiple entries in her journal associate him with the monikers Coke de Mi Rey, My Coke King, and Pala Blanca. When the cocaine trade grew throughout Colombia in the middle of the 1970s, Escobar had already been a part of organized crime for 10 years. The Colombian Security Service, DAS, became aware of Escobar's quick ascent and detained him in May 1976 after he returned from cocaine trafficking in Ecuador. 39 kilograms of cocaine were discovered by DAS agents in Escobar's vehicle's spare tire. Escobar was released from prison along with other inmates after he was able to influence the first judge in the litigation and bribe the second judge. Escobar organized more smuggling shipments, routes, and distribution networks in South Florida, California, Puerto Rico, and other areas of the nation as a result of the sharp rise in the demand for cocaine in the U.S. Together, he and Carl Carlos Letter, the other co-founder of the cartel, developed Norman's K, an island situated approximately 350 kilometers, 220 miles, southeast of the Florida coast, as a new transshipment hub in the Bahamas. The majority of the island was bought by Escobar and Robert Vesco, who also constructed a refrigerated warehouse to store cocaine. The property comprised a hotel, residences, boats, airplanes, and a one-kilometer airport. His brother claims that Escobar did not buy Norman's K, rather, leaders alone was responsible for it. Once affluent, Escobar built or acquired a number of homes and safe houses, the most well-known of them being Hacienda Napolis. The opulent residence housed a sculpture garden, a colonial mansion, and an entire zoo featuring creatures from every continent, such as giraffes, hippopotamuses, elephants, and exotic birds. In addition, Escobar intended to build a fortification in the Greek style close by. Work on the citadel was initiated but never completed. Escobar also had a house in the United States that he owned in his own name. It was a pink, 6,500 square foot, 604 square meter, estate on the shore at 5860 North Bay Road in Miami Beach, Florida. Constructed in 1948 on Biscayne Bay, the four-bedroom estate was taken acquired by the federal government of the United States in the 1980s. Eventually, Christian de Birdware, the owner of the Chicken Kitchen fast food restaurant, purchased the rundown property in 2014. Escobar was threatened by the Cali Cartel, the Colombian police, and the U.S. government. On December December 2, 1993, Colombian Special Forces, utilizing technology supplied by the United States, discovered Escobar in a house located in a middle-class residential 
section of Medellin. As the police attempted to apprehend Escobar, a gunfight broke out quite fast. Escobar attempted to flee from the roof but was shot and murdered. In addition to being shot in the head, he also took hits to the torso, foot, and head. The question of whether he shot himself to death or committed suicide was raised by this. A rival Cali cartel controlled the cocaine market until the mid-1990s, when its leaders were either executed or detained by the Colombian government, following Escobar's death and the subsequent disintegration of the Medellin cartel. In Medellin, Escobar's image of the Robin Hood remained influential for a long time. More than 25,000 people attended Escobar's funeral as many there, particularly the impoverished people he had helped while he was alive, expressed their sorrow at his passing. A few of them pray to him for heavenly assistance and regard him as a saint. El Monte Sacro Cemetery is where Escobar was laid to rest. Following Escobar's demise, the government granted low-income families access to the ranch, zoo, and castle at Hacienda Napoles through the extinction de Dominio statute. The land was transformed into a theme park with four opulent hotels encircling it and providing views of the zoo. Please be sure to like this video and share your thoughts with us in the comments section. Remember to subscribe for even more engrossing real crime stories. Stay tuned as we have a lot more to explore on this channel.